and then move into block defeat. We talk with our block defeat with our three points of contact. We want our hands, face mask, and our foot to all strike at the same time. The reason for this is with our face mask, again, we want our face mask to hit the chest plates when we're hitting the side of our head. This also has a dual purpose when we implement it in block defeat. If you strike a guy with your face mask in his chest, he's going to get shocked. As he does this and you strike with your face mask, that's when we want to punch and extend our hands because as he gets shocked from your face mask and you extend your hands at that point, he's already back on his heels. We want to step with our face mask, hands, and foot because as we step our foot to the ground, that's when our hips explode and we're able to run through. We have a punch drill. This is going to be very similar to drills for tackling. You line up two guys across from each other and you start with just punch and landing all three of those points of contact at the same time. You said one coach can yell punch, you punch, and reset. You punch with the other foot and reset, and you flip sides, the other guy goes. So this is used in every single game, you will need to defeat a block. We punch, we get three points of contact in at the same time, throw them past. <coughs> Here you'll see, again, we don't get face mask on the chest, but we have a good punch. If your players are strong enough to just bench press, that's great. But a lot of times they won't be, so we need to get hands and feet in the ground at the same time. Here you watch, we've got a big offensive lineman coming out at us. We get a foot in the ground, we get a punch, we get a face mask in the chest plate. We're then able, that's when, if we're explosive and physical and violent with these three points of contact, that's what's going to get offensive linemen off of us. Offensive linemen are going to be bigger than linebackers, but having these punch drills is going to help us a lot. We then move on to a punch, <coughs> pull, and a rip. With our punch, pull, and rip, we then move into just punch and pull progression. Uh, but our punch is going to be three points of contact, then we want to grab the jersey and we want to pull it down to our opposite pocket. As we do this, that's going to get the offensive player off balance. <coughs> we rip through and come to balance on the other side. Set up the same drills, gentlemen. <coughs> and you go, what I like to do as I do this and as I coach it, is I say punch, <coughs> And then I will say pull, and then I will say rip. And as the players start to get this, then you can go faster. Punch, pull, rip, punch, pull, rip, and then you put it all together, and you just say, say go, and then they do it. Our button separate drill, this is again probably the most useful drill, the most repeated drill that we do along with our heads up tackle. As I said before, you put a hand on each helmet for heads up tackle. You say set go and you release it. Now instead of running through and tackling the other player, we're working on butting with our head and separating with our hands. That's where we get the button separate term. But again, we're going to have three points of contact. Both players are going to be leaning forward. We're going to strike with our three points of contact and run through. We do this before every game, before a lot of practices, because it's a physical <laughs> drill that moves quickly. If you're going to take anything, I'd probably take those two drills from this. Uh, those are our most useful ones that we have. You can also do with it, button separate, you can implement the push-pull rip with it as well. I'll find you a good example here of a full push-pull rip. So this is where it would be implemented in the game. We have a punch, we have a pull, we have a rip. We're then able to make a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. That's what it would look like full time. Now, moving on to our turnover overview. Anytime we recover a fumble, we have two different modes of operations that we can use to recover the fumble. We have recovering in a fetal position and recovering in a scoop and score position. We call it a fetal position because you're going to be on the ground in a fetal position. Uh, this is used in any game situations. And anytime the ball's in a pile, we want to talk always about situational. We want, to, we want our kids to learn the game of football. 
So we always talk about when you would use it, why you would use it. Uh, this at the end of the game, or if it's in a pile, what we want is we want our players, this can be used with all players, not just linebackers though. We want our players to approach the ball from the side, they slide in, they cover up the ball. <coughs> but we want them to cover up the ball, lay on their side, so that no point of the ball is out or showing. At this point, if no part of the ball is showing, the other team can't get it. motion for you, it's hard to get filmed in the bottom of piles like this. You can see the linebacker here slides, gets on top of the ball in a fetal position and covers it up. At this point, the other team isn't able to get the ball from us. Here's another good angle of it. Where you can see sliding in, covering up in a fetal <laughs> position, we recover. The drills that we would use for this, pretty easy. You stand your linebackers, you could do it, you could partner them up if you're looking for most reps possible, which is always good, you partner them up. One player has the football, rolls it out in front, the other player has to go and recover. You then run back, and you can switch. If you don't have the number of footballs for that, you line them up in one line, you roll it out, one player goes, recovers it, runs it back to you. Next player comes up. Scoop and score technique that we talk about, this is used when, again, you want to talk about situational stuff at the end of games with your players. This is used if you need to score, or if the ball's in the open field where you think you can recover it cleanly. We always talk about, you want to feel it like a ground ball. What we do is, we get to the side of it, to scoop it like a ground ball, we drag our knuckles on the ground, pick it up, and then we run with it. Again, I mean, I talk... The other coaches, when I gave them this talk, made fun of me for beaver. My high school yelled beaver for every fumble. I don't know why they never told me. Uh, but you can, have fu you can yell fumble, you can yell beaver, you can yell fire, anything you want. Uh, again, we want to bend at the knees and the waist. You want to scrape your knuckles on the ground and scoop it like a ground ball. to the side of the football, we scoop it up like a ground ball with our knuckles on the ground, and we're then able to run. We get to the side of the football. Now this one's easy because the ball's pretty much laying still. But by getting to the side of it like this, this is proof that even your D lineman can benefit from this drill. Here we have in the back, the lineman picking it up. He gets to the side of it, gets his knuckles to the ground, he's able to scoop it and run with it. <coughs> I'm a little, we have, I have uh, a one man and a two man strip drill here for you that I think are useful. We don't implement them a ton. My belief is, a linebacker is if fumbles happen when you have good solid tackles and running backs aren't going to be ready for it and that's when fumbles happen. And we also have drills that we use in case you're in a position where you need to use it. Uh, with our one man strip drills, we have two players, our lines here, we have a defensive player and an offensive player. Offensive players start with the football and begin to run. Generally we have them going at about 75 percent. You'll see a lot of times what I think is a flaw in the system is running backs when they do fumble drills, they're extremely careless and they just they goof around and have fun with it. What we want is we want our running backs to be carrying the ball outside of their body but still make it game-like. And anytime a running back in any game situation feels contact, they're going to button up and they're going to protect the football. 
So we try to make that as game-like as possible. When the linebacker comes, anytime that they feel the linebacker secure the tackle, we want them to button up. This makes it tougher for the linebackers. One thing that we really teach is you need to make all of your contact at one point. I've heard coaches talk before that you secure the tackle and then you punch and rip. I think that in order to do this, you need to secure the tackle and punch and rip at the same time. As you come through and make contact with your outside arm, you need to be punching or ripping at the exact same time. Because if you don't, that running back's going to button up, and at that point, you're not going to be able to cause a fumble. So, I mean, implementing the, those ideas into it is going to help you. The other drill is a two-man drill. Uh, anytime you're in a pile, uh, we want our defensive <coughs> players to be able to pull up the football. So I have them line up in a heads-up position, where if the running back is carrying the ball in this arm, the linebacker is going to be here across from him, and the coach is going to be in the heads-up position. But then you're going to have another player on the other side of the coach. And when they come together, you can still practice good fundamental tackling. But as he tackles, the other player who's free is going to pull up the football. <laughs> Very rarely, I think, do you see on here like fumbles happen just when players are running through and pulling up the football. I have a couple clips of fumbles happening just because of good solid tackling. Uh, <coughs> tackle, I mean, and then we're able, because we practice recovering, we're able to recover that fumble. 